Hello everyone out there on the internet to the third and last day of the Virtual Developers Conference, our first major online event in Mauritius. And we are thrilled to have you back. So I had a look on the on the schedule for today. It looks amazing. We're gonna have lots and lots of lots of interesting topics, fantastic speakers coming from Mauritius as well as from the rest of the world. Aditya. Welcome back on the stream. How are you? I'm doing good, Jockey. Thank you. And I also welcome the audience on the third and last day of DevCon. Uh, I hope that you make the most of our last day and enjoy the, show, the rest of the show. Yeah. Today for the start, we have uh, an amazing topic on empowering women. Uh, and our speakers will be Zuleika, the co-founder and ex-director of Spoon Consulting together with Aisha, who is the founder of Future Female Invest. So let's just welcome them on the stage. Yes, welcome ladies. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Happy to be here again on the line for sharing on a different topic, empowering women post COVID-19, which could be an addition to the last part of my previous talk, for those who were on, of course. So, and I'm really, today, I'm not alone. I am with, with Aisha Julie, and um, delighted to be with her. So, Aisha, um, I think, um, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Hi Zuleika, good morning everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here at a developers conference. I never ever thought I would be talking at a developers conference because if anybody knows me, I'm the least technologically able person. Um, but I'm going to be talking about a topic that's really, really close to my heart and that's empowering women and ensuring women are empowered um, post-COVID. So anyway, so my name's Aisha and I am the co-founder of um, Future Females Invest and Future Females Invest has been created to power financial opportunity for African women. So why, why do we exist? So we exist because Africa actually has the largest number of women entrepreneurs and women in business than the whole of the world. Um, and women actually put more back into their families and communities the men do. So they help to create a really prosperous society. So 90% of a woman's earnings goes back into their family community and community versus that of 40% of men. So we know women do good business and make good business, but yet women aren't receiving enough investment. And according to the African Development Bank, there's a bank, there is a $42 billion investment gap for financing women entrepreneurs, African women, African women in business. And this gap's huge. And to me, this is an unacceptable gap. And if we close this gap, we know that we can create more wealth, more prosperity, more security, and more sustainability for women on the continent and in the world. So, so we're at a tech conference. So let me just talk about African women tech entrepreneurs. So African women tech entrepreneurs just simply aren't receiving enough investment. Um, so of the over $700 million in venture capital that was invested across the African continent in 2019, only 2% 2 of that went to women-owned businesses. Don't you think that that's shocking, Zuleika? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and, um, you know, South Africa also one of the biggest tech hubs, um, on the continent. Um, in 2018, only 4.5% of VC and angel investment went to women. Imagine what would have happened if we had invested more money. And 2019, over a million, the, um, of the startups that raised over a million dollar, only 13 were co-founded by women and four had women-led teams. So we know we need to do better when it comes to women. Um, but right, look, in business, what, what happens when your business isn't doing well, Zuleika? Well, I'm, I think it's with, I would like to need support and, yeah, yeah you know, to, to see the, what's happening around me and how 
I can find uh, help yeah. from somewhere. But if you see something's working well, you you do more of that, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know that investing in women works. So thirty women, when you invest in a woman entrepreneur, they typically have a thirty-five percent higher return on investment. So it makes business sense, right? Of so course. as a business yeah, woman, yeah. yeah. You would invest more in yeah. women because it, it creates profit. Yeah. But and then the, the most important is the return on investment is something really important. So, so you know, we're not yeah. doing it because it's a nice thing to do and we love women. It makes yeah, it makes sense. Business sense. Yes. I agree. So then what have you done? Like I mean, you you you've been impacted coming back to this pandemic, this unprecedented crisis, which has hit us so hard. Mm. So what uh, have you done to be able to show this, like this, uh, have investing more in women? I know, I've seen that um, you have responded to the MRIC about this uh, proposal for, um, for um, the fast track innovative projects to counter the COVID-19 because I really think during the pandemic the women have been the most impacted because they have had to juggle with so many different things and so many different responsibilities. You're right, Zuleika. COVID-19 came out of nowhere and it really, really hit women hard. I love this picture. I also hate it at the same time <laughs> because it reminds me of my life. Um, but a lot of women feel like this, right? They've got so many responsibilities. They're juggling so many things. And COVID exacerbated that even more, right? Because they weren't able to get help and support from family. Their children may not have been at school. Their caring responsibilities increased. Plus, they had to work. So um, as we saw in the pandemic, women's unpaid caring and domestic workloads increased. There's that joke um, that the man comes home from work and wants his dinner and his wife's been at home all day. He says, oh, I've had a really busy day at work. How was your day? I'm sure you had a nice relaxing day at home doing nothing. And she said, yeah, no, I was doing the washing, I was cooking the dinner, I was looking after the kids, I was changing nappies. That's hard work. It's still work. The difference is women just aren't being paid for it. Um, also during the pandemic, we saw an increase in domestic violence, particularly on women. Women, women's businesses were also disproportionately impacted because many women work in the informal sectors or they work in leisure, hospitality, beauty, which are tr traditionally face-to-face -face and quite close contact. So this meant that their business was closed. That means they didn't have money. It meant cash flow. There was cash flow issues. And also, um, some women were unsure of how to digitalize their business and how to pivot their business to take it online. Um, because technology is sometimes seen as, as not a feminine thing to do. So not only that, so it's not just me that's saying this, there has been some real research into this. Um, 500 startups, the VC firm found that 80% of women had said their business had been adversely affected. 69% reported on having less than six months of runway, so cash flow issues. And 40% said the pandemic had in, impacted their, their fundraising goals. And as we saw earlier, it's difficult for women to access capital. So again, the pandemic has compounded that even more. Okay, so on your side, um, you've had uh, been impacted. And we've seen the figures here that quite a lot of really women have been most economically impacted. Mm -hmm. So, um, what I mean, what motivated your response to this, like to have really um, this uh, fast, uh, innovative, fast track innovative project to be able to counter these impacts on the women entrepreneur or even in the, the women? In women uh, in, in, in Mauritius and in Africa mm -hmm. and later on on an international level. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, we've seen, we knew, know that women were already, so we know that the pandemic has made it even harder for women. Um, 
So what we wanted to do was make life easier for women, um, provide access and support, and enable women, you know, to build their resilience and help them digitalize. So we were um, part funded by the MRIC to create an online platform um, that would bring women together. It's called Ready to Thrive. It's part of the Future Females Invest um, offerings of projects that we run. And Ready to Thrive will provide online training for women. It's an online platform. We want it to help close that gender digital divide by enabling women to get online and find things that are useful to them and their business. Um, so Ready to Thrive is going to have a talent marketplace. So it's going to have a job board where women can advertise jobs. It's going to have access to resources. So information women need to help run their businesses, to help set up a business. So instead of having to go to five different places online or spend hours on Google, they can come to one place and find the information that they need. It's going to create a virtual community of women, um, women in business, women entrepreneurs, mentors, coaches, experts, and also it will um, provide a mentor matching service so women can register as mentors or as mentees so that they can have support on what can be quite a lonely journey um, to help them reach their goals and help their businesses grow and thrive. And also what it's going to have is access to online training. So um, access that, to training that they can go back and rewatch at their own time and at their own space. Because again, we've seen that women are juggling so many responsibilities that often don't get time to um, to go online and do something for themselves um, that's either going to help them personally or professionally. So we're going to have online training delivered by our international um, network of experts who are ready to support women entrepreneurs. And this whole project, this whole platform is going to help create jobs. It's going to build infrastructure capacity. It's going to contribute to the growth and recovery of the economy. It's going to increase access to networks for women entrepreneurs. It's going to help upskill them and help them to grow their businesses. So that's why we've created Ready to Thrive, to bring everything together in one easy to use space okay wow it's really like it's amazing really and i really love the name of the the project i think it was the name which was the label of this project ready ready to thrive and um really i think it's for me it's something so um like like you said one stop place mm -hmm. where bringing all the women to together so whatever whether they are entrepreneur whether they want to go to to promote their business uh, whether they don't know really what they will do i mean it's, it will be also a guidance for for these women i think this is the platform is really i, I said it but it, it's wow it's innovative it's um, um really like um leveraging technology again, uh, using, because it will be based on technology, of course, and this community, really building a community for women, mm -hmm. I think that's really great, because what you said also, it's not only, I mean, women leaders, today we've got some of them, but it's not like uh, they, they are still, we, we still have, it is changing, but it still have to go on changing. Uh, as we said, uh, it, it has been seen, during this pandemic, that the countries led by women, they have been managing this crisis better. So it is a fact, as we see, we've seen these women from these different countries, Germany, New Zealand, Belgium, Finland, Iceland, Denmark, so, from so many different cultures. But then we can say that maybe it's the resilience uh, their trust, their pragmatism, the the way, the, the feelings, because that 
means the way they do things, they do things differently. And they are able to better understand, uh, more comprehensive. And uh, the, the best part of it, okay, you, you said that women are bringing so much things to, to the society, but so today we are, they are not that much recognized. But at least we know that whenever they do something, so they do it well. Mm. And I can understand that they have got this, you know, because they do it with their hearts. I think that's that's the best part of it. So, okay. what do you think about it? The view is it going to change? Because the view of of having more leaders, more, more people on the boards, uh, in 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 our society. Look, it makes sense. It's just it, I think it's not something nice. Just something nice to do. I think it's essential. I think women aren't charity. Women, oh, let's, let's not do this just for these poor women. No, investing in women is good business sense, right? We've seen. But when you invest in women, she invests in her community. But not only that, she provides a better return on investment. So it makes sense to do it, right? We've seen the um, statistics about um, governance. And when you put more women in leadership positions, at C-suite levels in businesses, on board, the governance improves and profit profitability also usually improves for businesses and now with the pandemic we've seen that the countries that are led by women also have had a higher success rate so it makes sense on so many levels to empower women and put them in decision making roles in leading roles and you know to be the innovators of the future okay then what do you think like what are the, the next steps? What would you think about having more women? Because, okay, it is changing. We can see even in Mauritius, people in the technology, because we are here at a tech conference, so we know that women, they are, um, they are not that daring to, to come out of their comfort zone, and maybe they don't really know what's happening in the tech world. So what do you think? What would be the next steps uh, to really promote the women, to, to make them aware of what's happening in the tech world, like the STEM, that it's not only, I mean, it's science, technology, engineering, mathematics, but it's not only words, it's something where they can really bring something better to our world. So what, how do you see that? How, how can we make it easier for women and bring more women here on board? Because it is changing, but I think there are things to do for it to change even more. Mm. I think we have to take a full society approach. Um, I think we need to go back to schools at an early age and encourage girls to take um, to take STEM subjects and and understand that STEM is a is a potential career for young girls. Then after that through the education system, from secondary education up to tertiary, encourage women and girls to um, take those courses. But also as women um, in careers um, and women in business, we must equip women already in businesses around how to digitalize, how to incorporate technology into their business so that we can create more innovative, sustainable businesses. Um, so for example, as I said, I'm really not a tech person at all. Um, and our business, FFI, was a very much a face-to-face -face business. We did lots of coaching, lots of training, lots of events and consultancy, and COVID put a stop to that. We had a big event um, planned for September in Nigeria for over a thousand women, that event couldn't happen so we could have either cried and let our business fold but what we did was we pivoted and now we've created this online platform or we are in the process of creating this online platform we've really stepped out of Tori and myself the co-founder have really stepped out of our comfort zone and we're embracing and learning about tech and bringing on board partners that can support us to develop the technological aspects of our business that can then in turn inspire and empower and support other women like us who feel like tech's not for them to embrace tech, to digitalize and become more, uh, to pivot, become profitable. 
Um, so yeah, I feel that we just must equip, empower, and celebrate women, okay. and and really demystify tech to women. Yeah, I think that's the thing: is demystify tech to women because they uh, again, I think women sometimes they think it's only like. Uh, for men and uh, or for young people as well I, I've got that from my kids they say mommy you're too old to be doing technology <laughs> yeah but you know um, no I think it's, it's that's the thing it's the, the daring part that women should know and, and I, I really think that the platform it's I said it's amazing and I, I'm really like I, I believe in the fact that this platform which is based on technology mm -hmm. will be really like a great support to empower celebrate and support the women in mm -hmm. the business and just on that note actually oh, we, are, we are at a developers conference so if there are any developers out there watching this particularly women I would really 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 be grateful if you would get in touch with us because we have lots of projects that we're working on and our entrepreneurs are working on projects and sometimes they just need a bit of support or help or connection to a developer that will help demystify the tech for them so it, if you are a developer and you want to enable women and equip women with digital skills please please get in touch with me i think this is the, the message is, is on so um, I'm sure there are developers and more, and if ever women, it would be great yeah. to come and join us and uh, help us to develop this uh, platform and to build this community of powerful women. And so Aisha, where, where do we, if ever, I'm sure there will be definitely be people in the audience who will connect with us. So how do they do that? Well, you can um, contact me via email. That's always the best way to contact me, um, which is aishafuturefemalesinvest.com or through the website or LinkedIn, Instagram or Facebook. And questions now? Is it questions? Yeah, I think, uh, the, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening for now. Thank you so much, Aisha, because uh, really it was uh, very inspi inspirational. So let's um, thank see. You. Thank you also, Zuleika, because you're also a very inspirational woman in, woman in tech. So thank you for opening the doors for other women to come into Yeah, that, that, that's my objective now. It's really to open the doors for the other women there. So um, thank you. And uh, I think the floor is for the audience for the questions. Yeah, that was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, well, um, let me let me start on my side, actually. Um, throughout the presentation, um, I found it a little bit one-sided. <laughs> I mean, being a guy, it might be, but um, I see the positivity in the message, but I was um, missing also the part that actually men have to do their part and have to learn. Because quite frankly, it's a situation that women being in such a position that they are not um, appreciated enough is also in the responsibility of, of men that actually that they are um, opening these kind of opportunities that they are encouraging um, their their wives their life partners their colleagues at work and even their children because I mean I have, we have I have three children and my daughter she has no problem working on the computer, writing programs, or you know, having an interest in, in biology or, or chemistry. And so I think this is, it's, it's not only about that um, women among each other um, boost, which is very positive, but it's also, to my opinion, the aspect that men have to learn and to you know, go the same path because humanity cannot thrive only on on fifty percent of of its capacity. What's your point of, of view on that? Well, I absolutely agree with you. Um, 
And we do need more male allies and we do need, especially in the investment world, more um, men to allow women to come onto their investment committees and make the decisions about where the capital flow. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, if that's not happening, then women do need to take it upon themselves to create their own funds, their own investment committees and stuff. But yes, we need absolutely need more male allies on board, championing women and opening the doors for women and bringing bringing women up and seeing the benefits of having women as equals and, and in leadership positions. Uh, I, I, I would say I would like to add something. It's really, it's, it's a complementary thing. Women and men, as I said before, I think we have got different some on so many things we do things differently we have got different uh, ways approach but we need both so i really yeah. think that it exactly. is something men and women should be on board uh, to be able to uh, and, and, and really on some kind of an equal you know basis to be able to bring uh, the world for a better a better world yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, even if we have a look at history, it's a situation that um, major breakthroughs in science or in, in bringing humanity forward, um, they were actually women responsible for. I mean, taking the case of Marie Curie uh, that took care of, of uh, X-ray, Röntgen, um, or, yeah, uh, Discovery, um, the the hidden figures at NASA, as the famous movie is, is, is about. I mean, um, there is Grace Hopper, um, other Lovecraft. They are all famous women in the STEM field that actually brought a lot, a lot of drive and, and innovation to the field. And this should be more emphased and also being uh, a guide towards women right now and the next generation. So yeah, um, Adija, what, what's your point of view on that? Uh, basically, same as uh, everyone, as Zuleika said, women and men both are complementary and uh, we should care for each other and help each other achieve uh, what we set out. Also, I would like to add that in, to encourage more women and more girls to come into the STEM field, it needs to start uh, right at the kindergarten or even primary schools. So that's really important. The energy and encouragement, uh, the love for the field comes from a really long, young age, and we need to push for that. We Absolutely have, right. I actually met a lady the other day, and she said um, all the children were given gifts at uh, some celebration, and the girl was given a, a toy cooking set, and all the boys were given Lego. And she yeah. went. She went a little bit crazy. And she snatched the frying pan from the the girl and swapped it with the boy with the Lego, and said, "No, nope, the boy needs to learn to cook, and she needs to learn how to build." Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. This this yeah. is the problem in society. Exactly. This is the problem in society at the moment. I think. And for example, um, I mean. Taking our household is, is is an exception to my opinion because if there if there is um, distribution of Legos, they all get Legos. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is true. I mean, it's just a situation that they have different preferences. You know, um, for my son, he is absolutely into Star Wars. My daughter as well, but not so much. So she's into the friends and elf themes uh, about uh, about Lego, but still, it's Lego. It's constructing. Um, other things is, you know, for the young kids, you have online programs, uh, the Hour of Code, uh, the Scratch application, where kids already get in a playful way into the STEM field. Um, my children, they were three and five when they stormed the, the, the um, what is it, the cyber caravan of the National Computer Board uh, to sit at the computers and do the hour of code. And, and the lady that were like, oh, let me explain it to them. And I, and I was like, um, do you think that they need explanation while they were already hacking and, and moving everything around? Yeah, so I mean, um, it starts at the household that um, 
there is an equal uh, opportunity, there is an equal treatment in regards to treats uh, and and um, activities, uh, but also. As Aditya mentioned, it, it goes out into a public institution when the kids go to nursery, to uh, to kindergarten, uh, to primary, because even then at, at other stages is a situation, let's say you have, you have a girl, you have a, a woman then going into a STEM class, a science class, and it's like, uh, are you sure that you're in the right room? And this kind of stigmatization needs to stop because otherwise you won't move forward. Mm. That's true. Change making, I think, really. Yeah, I mean, um, I also have the impression that, um, for example, I mean, excuse uh, my, my ignorance in this case because I'm, I'm, I'm coming from Germany. But being here in Mauritius now since over 13 years is also that sometimes I really get the impression that um, the future, the development of, of uh, women here on the island is um, too much um, predicted um, with the, the, the cultural frame, with um, the decisions by the parents. And so I think there might be also a lot of um, discouragement and um, perhaps um, disappointment or even frustration among women if they are not given the space or being allowed um, to follow their interest and perhaps their passion, even mm -hmm. then specifically if it goes into the STEM field. I think that word frustration is, is one that really resonates with a lot of women. We know in Mauritius, women are more likely to achieve higher grades at school and at secondary education and in university, yet when they graduate, they're least likely to get a job. If they do get a job, it's going to be paying less than their male counterparts. If they do get married, if they do have children, there's not much opportunity for flexible working. And then also, I think in terms of entrepreneurship, we have some amazing women entrepreneurs, some amazing role model women entrepreneurs like Zuleika, like Aisha Ali. So we have very good role models in Mauritius um, for women that have gone above and beyond and created international, international businesses. Yet women are often, um, like when you think of entrepreneurs or when you talk to people about Mauritian entrepreneurs, they think mainly of basket weavers and roti sellers, and that is just not true of Mauritius. We have incredible women entrepreneurs who are building businesses like Jade Lee from Catapult, who has set up her um, teaching young people how to code and um, kind of gamifying science and STEM. And these, these women need to be encouraged. These women need to be given access to really good training so that they can get their, take their um, idea to actuality and then from actuality, take it and scale it and grow it. So we need to have the infrastructure here where we are creating an enabling environment for women entrepreneurs to thrive and build their businesses. And then also alongside that, having a financial mechanism to support that, be that through like debt, um, bank loans or equity investment or a hybrid of the two or whatever it is. So we need to ensure that that um, entrepreneurial spirit is, is captured, carried along and brought to life. Yep. And taking two examples of women who are with men doing very good also, for example, at Panda and Wolf with their all these different innovative, um, yeah, they, yeah. Have been, they have been doing based on tech. And, and they've also, won lots, she's won lots of awards. They, yeah, yeah they, they, she has won lots of awards also. Mm -hmm. And um, again, there are two of them, but we see this complementary thing I, I was telling about before. And we also have a teaching, but, okay, but it's also based on tech, uh, the um, teaching um, gemstone, where also there is a lady and uh, a guy. And I think um, we, we, we can see that 
there is something being done that the, the, the ladies are aware that they can, they can. They are not only like, I can't. They, they are yeah. also yeah. Hoping, jumping into this, uh, out of their comfort zone and in the business world. And that's, that's uh, great to see. And I think we have to think about, uh, last time also we talked about this, to really think about what can be done even if it's some, you know, it's maybe it can be every four week, four months, or whatever. But I think we should really do something like a follow up to to enable and to promote and to make women believe in themselves. Because whatever we say is true in Mauritius, the culture, uh, the barrier, society is still on. It's changing, but it's still on. So how do we uh, try to, you know, make it change more and make these women come out for, for, for better. Well, we're yep. actually we're setting up an accelerator here for women, for women-led businesses as well. So Fantastic. Fantastic. that's one of the other things in, in our pipeline so that we can actually encourage and enable, so we don't just talk about doing, we actually do it. We get women ready, women-led businesses, women, um, businesses with a woman in the founding team, get ready to scale their business and grow it. And add tech into it, actually. Yeah. And when we're going to, like, I will be, I am also in, so we can do something together at some point, for sure. Well, <laughs> picking up the examples, uh, we don't have looked that far because, quite frankly, even with us, with the MSCC community, the organization of the Virtual Developers Conference was actually mainly executed and, and, and um, handled by, by the female team uh, that is behind it. So there's, there's Mary Jane, there's Marin, there is uh, Emmy for the graphical parts, there is uh, Shelly, so all women that, yep. are, that took uh, the coordination in their hands. And, um, but even then, with their activities and having the exchange, we, we sometimes ran into a conflict situation where, uh, you know, they, they unfortunately had to escalate it to a male organizer on the team to speak to the same person about the same topic that was then accepted without any uh, with any, uh, any doubts and any, um, you know, judgment, where the exact statement that previously was communicated by one of the ladies on the team uh, was like, ah, you know, don't talk to me. And this is where I see also the cultural problem. And um, <clears throat> I mean, one of the things that in our community is as well is that um, when we have when we have the chance to to um, uh, welcome uh, women in IT, women in in, uh, in technology. Is that um, we would like them to to present something that they were working on, that we encourage them to be present at at the meetings, and also when we look at the uh, statistics at the developer conferences over the years, is that we have a positive trending. Um, uh, ratio in re in regards to female speakers um, for over the years. So, and this is the trend that we would like to keep raising, so that hopefully, um, maybe next year, maybe in in the next five years, we come to to a situation where we are at, at least fifty fifty, and this is actually also the 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 let's say kind of. Um, target and, 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 and um, outlook that we want to, to go forward in the MSCC for our future activities. I think with that, uh, we might uh, <laughs> uh, wrap up this interview. Um, Suleika, Asia, it was great to have you on board to, to get um, your points of view. Uh, also, all these opportunities with the uh, FFI that there is a possibility for women to actually get encouraged, get empowered, get um, perhaps financial support, and there are activities going on to to actually um, motivate women in the in the general business world to to get into it 
to get out of the shell to you know show more um, um, activity in this area and again I hope that also there are possibilities that actually man can participate in order to get uh, to develop a better understanding and, and, and learning what they should do in regards to their their partners to their daughters um, and so on Okay, thank, thank you. I think we take it as an advice, as a recommendation, Johan, about this, uh, having the men also to help us because uh, that's nice to also have their point of view. And the other thing is, I think uh, uh, it's already on our minds the target of having like 50 50 um, speakers for the next, in some years, for the Developers Conference. That would be really awesome. We would do, like we, we would like have the impression, the feeling we have achieved something with you, of yeah. course, with you, the men and the, the organizers, men organizers. <laughs> okay, and thank you so much. Thank you also for the people like the women who are not really on the screens, but we know that they have been uh, working very hard. And thanks also to them that this is on. So thank you so much, uh, Mary Jane, Marie, Amy, and uh, all these women behind, and the audience also. And thank you so much, Aisha, really. Um, we're going to meet again, I think all of us, so for now, bye and have a great weekend. Thank you very much, and thank you, Zuleika. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank bye. you, and enjoy bye -bye. the rest of the conference. Take thank care. You. Bye. Wow, yeah, the, the topic about women in, in technology, in the MSSC community, in the field of IT, it's always, um, let's say, uh, a, a topic with that, um, you know, has a little bit of tension and I, it's exactly. really sad to have this kind of situation because um, even in my personal opinion, uh, women are doing an amazing job and uh, if you're working with women uh, um, together, um, most of the time, they actually yeah. get doing a better job than the male counterpart. And uh, mm -hmm. but again, I had it that uh, a few, uh, at, especially at the beginning when I when I came here to Mauritius, uh, we had women on the team, and one of them was really enthusiastic. She was really. Um, passionate about IT, she was really into it, and you could see her in the first year, she was really into it, active, learning, bits and pieces, and then in the uh, starting the second year on the job, she was like, uh, yeah, okay, and when I then had a personal conversation with her, it's like, mm, I noticed that you, you dropped your interest a little bit, and she was like, oh, well, you know, um, I'm supposed to get married next year and then as soon as I'm married I have to stay home and I can't work. I'm not allowed to work then anymore because I'm a married woman. And that was like a slap in the face on my side about wow there is this cultural weight is literally um, destroying a woman's life, a woman's future. Um, just by cultural constraints and family. And I was like, wow, well, blown I away. Hope, I hope everything's starting to change with the new generation and things fading away. Uh, like uh, at my place at home, I have a sister who, uh, who has really been interested in Formula One actually. And since, since since small, uh, she she wants to be on the engineering side of the field, building cars and mechanics. And my parents have been really supportive of that. In fact, she's going to start her engineering uh, degree here in Mauritius next year. So I really hope that move uh, parents are supportive, uh, things are really open, and there's no res uh, societal restrictions to ladies. And it's just uh, a compliment. I think it's come from, from both of us, uh, males and females, and everyone in the society to really push women's children and everyone uh, towards their passion and goal. Yes, I agree. I mean, right now, as I mentioned it earlier, is that 
I see this um, um, negative generalization that, you know, that, um, as I mentioned, some uh, a woman comes into into a, a physics class. It's like, what are you doing here? It would be the same like if your sister then starts at the garage. It's like, what is she doing here? Uh, you know, there there is this there is this wrong anticipation. There is this wrong view of things that um, that needs to change. And exactly, speaking yeah. of speaking of Formula One, uh, I have to say that actually when when you keep an eye on what's happening in the pit stops in the paddock, I have the impression that over the past years the uh, presence of um, female uh, engineers and, and um, players in the Formula One paddock, especially around the cars, actually yeah. has increased. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that too. Actually, I, I would love to see a female pilot in the Formula One races because that's kind we of... Almost we almost yeah. had it last year. Um, we almost had it that um, what was it? Um, oh, let me let me catch up. Um, we almost had it with the with a female first female F1 driver, and actually in in F2 uh, we already had female uh, female driver, but only one, and that's not enough. I was I, I in F2. I think it was Racing Point that um, had the female driver from Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. Um, um, yeah, F1, yeah. it would be, uh, really, really more. be good. What exactly. I like is that actually that NASA already upped the game with the female astronauts. I mean, this is yeah. awesome. And this is also, to my opinion, an, an organization that acts as a, as a global role model uh, to really uh, emphasize that uh, women know their subject, that women can do the job, that women do the job, perhaps even in a better way, and that this is important that um, there, is, uh, there is a cooperation, there is this collaboration and, and not just uh, male-dominated parts. Because, I mean, even if you see in, 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 in computers, um, how did it start? I mean, if you look back into the 60s, 70s, the majority of computer operators uh, were actually women. And I'm not talking yeah. about typists. I'm talking about um, database queries, database operators. These were women at the, at uh, at that time. And then I don't know what happened. Maybe within the 70s, suddenly it was like they got kicked out or they were phased out. Like okay, no. And well, I'm buff. I hope I'm buff with that. We can correct these mistakes and hope for a better future with more women and more inclusive culture. So, really hope this comes to fruit. Uh, All right. We take a small break now. Exactly. The audience, stay tuned. We're going to be back in a tick.